tēnā koe ngā kai, tēnā tātou i te whānau, he uri au no te maunga, tito ia a Taranaki, ko Jackie Forbes, tāko ingoa, ko te wahanga ki a hau, ko te whakamārama, mai i ahu mai a a parakore i whia i ahu mai i nei wānanga i whia. Ko mohi o ki tātou, ko tā parakore he whai i ngā mātauranga, ko tupuna mai e o tātou mātua tupuna, e hara i te kaupapa hau. Hoi anō, kia ora everyone. My part this afternoon is to talk about the whakapapa of parakore in general and explain how these wānanga uh, came about and, and where these wānanga came from. And to uh, kōrero about the whakapapa of Parakore, of Parakore Marae Incorporated, we need to talk about the whakapapa of extreme waste because Parakore began as a small project within extreme waste. So the setting is Whaingaroa Te Taihau Aru, uh, e kia ana te kōrero Whaingaroa he moana Aotea he whenua, ka whia he tangata. And it was in the 1990s that Rick Thorpe uh, went to Eva Rickard and had a kōrero with her about the health and the well-being of the Whaingaroa Harbour. And Eva's kōrero to Rick was direct. And she said to him, if you want to improve uh, the harbour quality, then you need to go up the hill and sort out that waste in the landfill that leaches down into our harbour. So, and so that's what a group of committed and slightly crazy locals did. Uh, Rick, Liz, Katarina, Tuihana, Penny, Marie and PJ, they went up the hill to the local landfill and they started Extreme Zero Waste, which was incorporated in 2000 with a purpose to manage raglan solid waste within the principles of zero waste to landfill. And they were contracted by Waikato District Council to operate the raglan transfer station at, as it was known then, and they're still there today in 2022. However, today it's known as a community resource recovery centre. I started working at Extreme in 2004 as an education manager and Extreme had a really good relationship and no, and no doubt still does uh, with Waikato, the Waikato Regional Council. So in 2008, Gannon Ormsby, who was working at the Waikato Regional Council, he called a series of meetings inviting Māori who were working in the waste sector um, to discuss what to do in terms of the large amounts of waste that were being generated on marae over, uh, from hui being held over short periods of time. And Mariana Tyler, who was a part of that group, she wrote a scoping report and it was decided that extreme uh, waste should apply to the Sustainable Management Fund for a pilot marae recycling project. So we applied to this fund uh, that was within the Ministry for the Environment and in, in January 2009 and by July 2009 we had started a project which we called Parakori. All projects that need a bit of publicity and attention need a launch and so Parakori was launched in late um, 2009 at Poihakina Marae and it was initially established as a solution for marae. The first three marae to take part in that pilot were Poihakina uh, Marae Kiri, in Whaingaro, Kirikiriro Marae and Tūranga, uh, Tūranga Waiwai Marae. At the beginning of, of the project, we, we really focused on researching and learning about what was happening. And so we visited worm farming, um, businesses, the Penrose paper mill, and um, I just want to make mention of this school because we went to um, Edmund Hillary School in Papakura and there was uh, food production happening um, <coughs> throughout the kura. And um, the principal took us onto the field and led us through an alleyway. And this alleyway took us to another street um, and it was a state housing street. And um, in that street, there were houses 
you know, with gardens flourishing. And for us, when we walked and, and saw everyone outside gardening and talking over the fences, we were like, we're walking into the future because this is what um, we're dreaming of is, um, <clears throat> is uh, Kai sovereignty. So that's something that, that we've never um, forgotten and has been a source of inspiration for us. In November um, 2010, we became incorporated. So we stepped out from under the umbrella of Extreme Zero Waste and became our own organization. This enabled us to uh, develop our own vision, our own aspirations, as well as apply for our own funding. So <clears throat> with all beginning organizations, you are the workers and you are the leadership team and you are the board. Uh, so this was our team. Penny and I uh, were the part-time waste advisors, as we were called back then. Mariana, Tyler, and Carol Henry, they both worked at the Waikato Regional Council, and Carol was our, our chair, and Mariana, uh, a board member, and also my go-to mentor. And so this was our, um, we called ourselves the steering committee. So it was back um, on Eva Rickard's um, hapu whenua at Te Kokiri in Whaingaroa, where we had a wānanga uh, facilitated by Stephen Wilson, and together we came up with a vision of a riro tonga mai hoki tonga atu, meaning that everything that we have in our lives comes from natural resources, which come from kapatūnaku. And so we receive all these tonga, and we need to be reciprocal, and we need to return tonga as well to kapatūnaku. And our mission was that by 2020, all marae and Aotearoa are working towards zero waste. So again, like all good beginning projects, it's a bit of a set the direction and let's try and work out how to get there. We knew that education would be required. We knew that we would need to provide resources and equipment to make everything easy for people to work towards zero waste. Both Penny and I had been the community education manager at Extreme. Both of us had been in Vari Schools facilitators. I was a, a kohanga kurakaupapa teacher and Penny a te atarangi kaiko. And so we began making up uh, how, how we would um, deliver uh, a parakuri education program. And it was at this point that we reached out to Erst um, from Tauranga who deliver a zero waste education program and paper for trees as well. And we asked them if we could please use their resources and their concepts and adapt them um, for our Te Ao Māori based waste education program. Bruce Trask, who's on the right, and Marty Hoffett agreed. And Paul Murray, who didn't work for us then, um, he was a zero waste educator, a zero waste education educator. He helped us to design our very first versions of Ngā Rawa Māori and Te Pūnaha Hokomea, uh, which will be available um, for you online tomorrow. So we are so very grateful to uh, Marty and Bruce for their generosity. And I just want to give a big shout out to them, uh, both here and also to Kim Edwards, of course, um, to say thank you. Uh, for all your support back then, but which is also ongoing. So there are three uh, wānanga that will be uh, available online, self-led uh, tomorrow. The first one is called uh, te, o, te Orokohanga, and this is to remind us um, through our whakapapa, we descend from Ranginui and Papa Tūnuku and that we are part of the natural world. And the second wānanga is called Ngā Rawa Māori, and uh, the purpose is to learn what our everyday stuff is made from. The third uh, wānanga is called Te Pūnaha Hoko Mea, and so this uh, is all about the linear extractive system of how most of our stuff is made. So the number of regions where Parakore has had a kaiarehe um, to deliver the program has grown over the years. And this has been because um, of the Waste Minimization Fund, who you could say we have had a love affair with since it opened uh, with 10 successful applications, which has enabled us to expand Parakuri into new regions um, throughout Te Ika Maui and Te Waipaunamu. 
So I'm just going to um, go through the expansion regionally of Parakuri. Um, and these photos that you're going to see are uh, photos that were taken at what we used to call our Hui Ato, which was like our, our annual conference. So in 2011, we were working in Rokawa, uh, Waikato and Hauraki. In 2013, we were also in Taranaki and Te Tauihu. In 2014, we were, um, we were working in Ruatahuna, Whakatane and Tauranga. 2015, uh, we, were, we had expanded into the far north. 2016, we had started a, a project, a waste minimization plan project in Ruapihu. In 2017, we started in Wellington, Te Arawa, Te Tairawhiti, and the Hawke's Bay. In 2018, we were working, um, started in Tūwhari Tōa and Whanganui uh, Manuatu. And um, since then, we've also uh, had projects that have taken us into Te Waipaunamu, um, Te Whanau Apanui, Te Tai Tukarau, Wairera Pa Wairoa and Maniapoto. So when we, um, going back to 2018, we were like, uh, oh, 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 you know, 2020 is really close and we've got this vision of all marae reducing waste by 2020. And we were only at around, oh, I think we were more than 20, I think we were like 23 or 24% um, of the marae that we were working with. and our uh, our frontline kaiara, he was saying to us, hey, our mission doesn't fit anymore because we're not just working with marae. We're working with kohanga reo, we're working with all types of ECEs, we're working with kura, with tertiary institutions, with secondary schools, with businesses, with organisations, sports clubs, churches, events, and the list went on. So we went back to the drawing board and only took us like a year or two perhaps um, and we came up with our new vision of Oranga Taio, Oranga Marae, Oranga Whanau. And our um, Te Pai Tata for us is to educate and advocate from a Māori worldview. And sometimes we add on the end of that to strengthen uh, connection to Ranginui and Papa Tuanuku. And sometimes we say we educate and advocate from a Māori worldview for a world without waste. So why? Why develop and have online self-led wānanga? Well, obviously um, COVID changed many things and we couldn't meet face-to-face -to, -face to deliver our education. Um, and we wanted to reach more people and we wanted to work more online. We were um, up to this point, predominantly a kanohi ki te kanohi program. And we wanted to add in online education uh, as an option. Uh, knowing that driving in cars, burning fossil fuels to deliver sustainability education must be a carefully considered action. So the self-led wānanga are to help um, create awareness and understanding of whakapapa. whakapapa our whakapapa to our whānau atua and the whakapapa of all the things we use and have in our lives so that we understand just how precious all our stuff is. Uh, we want to build um, understanding also about uh, how exploitative and extractive our current economy and systems are. And that's because the highest aim is always those shareholder profits. So uh, we want to encourage a shift where the highest ideal shifts from profits first. We need a we're aiming for a shift where the highest aim, the highest ideal is flourishing people and flourishing planet or oranga tayo. And um, so that we recognize that our tuakana of the natural world have rights to exist and have rights to well-being um, as well. So um, <clears throat> we also are uh, beginning to provide education and, and talk about how our linear exploitative economy has its foundations and imperialism colonization and white supremacy. And so we, we hope that these online wānanga um, help to build an army that, that can uh, quietly dismantle um, 
our current systems. And so what we're thinking is let our army be armed with spades and rakes and garden forks. Let our army eat local food. Uh, let's create an army that is continually learning, whether it be Matauranga Māori, our local stories, Tiriti education, or how to uh, design out waste. Let's work on kotahitanga and building partnerships. Let's buy bugger all. Let's get political and fight for the right to repair or reuse and resource recovery centres. And importantly, let's build Māori power because what's good for Māori is good for everyone. So <clears throat> we also think let's let, let the growth, if we, if we want growth going forward, let it be about inner growth uh, so that we can heal um, our wounds and thereby more fully tune into balance with, with Papatū and the Green. So I'm just um, ending my part to um, acknowledge our wonderful uh, supporters and funders who have contributed to bringing these self-led wānanga online. That's Waikato Regional Council, who helped a lot with our videos, as did Well Energy Trust uh, lot, uh, Lotteries, and also um, the Community Environment Fund, and, and um, in part, the waste minimisation fund too. Nō reira, ka kapia aku kōrero i konei hei uh, kanui te mihi tātātātā. Thank you very much, Jackie. Um, I'll hand it over to Tony, who will be going over the online learning details. Kia ora, Tony. Tēnā koe ngā kau, uh, o te rā tēnā tātou katoa, uh, ko wai ahau, ko Tony Kiriama, no Te Arua, no Ngāti Whakaue, Ngāti Rangi Wewehi, Ngāti Pekeao, uh, me Ngāti Wai, Te Ati Haunui, a Paparangi Hoki. Awesome to see so many people online, some familiar faces, um, even my auntie Pauline. Kia ora auntie. Yeah, so cool to see everyone. Um, so my part, talking about specific details around costs, so hia hati itu. So if you're signed up to our Oranga Taiao program, this online learning platform is free. And just to be clear, our Oranga Taiao program is, I suppose, the new name we refer to for our Parakore program, which some of you may be more familiar with. So any references to Oranga Taiao program is just the new name of our of what we deliver. So this online learning portal is complementary to our in-person wānanga. So I just want to confirm that it does not substitute our in-person program with your kaiārahi if you are signed up already. It's really a great place to review and to consolidate on what you would have learnt in the in-person wānanga and what was shared there. And if you are signed up and someone in your rōpū um, missed the in-person wānanga, this would be a good way to to come back and just um, catch up on what was missed for anyone who wasn't there in person. So because we believe this knowledge, this matauranga that we're sharing is so important and needs to be shared, we're opening this platform free to any Fano, hapu, iwi, not-for-profit entities and organisations. Um, but to link on to what I've just shared, if you do want the full Oranga Taiao program, then you would need to sign up. So if you are keen, if you're one of those people who aren't yet signed up or one of those rōpū and you're keen to be supported, if you just make a comment in the chat and one of our team will send you a, a direct message to get your contact details and just connect you with the local kaiārahi. So overall, we're hoping that lots of people will use these wānanga at home, at school, at the marae, within your organisation, within your homeschool maybe, within your whānau, friends, everywhere, together in groups, just, yeah, the more that take on and learn this knowledge for us, the better. And next up, so if you fall into the category of being part of the commercial or the public sector, there is a one-off fee of $19.99 per person. And this does give you open access to all the three wānanga that are available from tomorrow. Aye, so that, that covers our costs. Um, aye, so katira, that's that's all from me, from me for now. So 
ka whakahokia ki a koe e ngākau. Tēnā tātou. Kia ora, Tony. Thank you very much for sharing. Um, lastly, we have the wonderful Paul Murray, who will give us a virtual tour. So over to you, Paul. Tēnā koe e ngākau, tēnā koutou, um, e ngā iwi, e mā takitaki ana i tēnei rā. Uh, Huri tēne o Kānata, ora arā no Ontario hoki, um, ko ngā Great Lakes, te rohe o Pōku whānau, um, ko Ojibwe te iwi takitaki, ko ngā tākia tōku waka ki Kānata, um, e mihiana ki a koutou katoa. Greetings everybody, and once again, it's been said, but it is so wonderful to see so many faces here today. We're so excited to be sharing our mahi with you, and we're so very excited to see all of you come to share in that with us today. So I have the um, um, exciting job of showing you these wānanga we've been talking about all this time. So it's time for the virtual tour. So as I'm just about to share my screen, I'm imagining that I'm hearing you all do a drum roll on your table as it's about to appear in front of you because here it comes, drum roll please. And there we go, it's our website page. <laughs> But this is where you're going to find our wānanga. Now, as mentioned already, we it goes live Thursday morning. So what will happen is that everybody who's registered today to be part of this hui, um, you will get a follow-up email. And within that email, it will have a link uh, to this and you'll be able to um, access these online. Now, um, Tomorrow it will appear, you can see on my menu bar here, there's what we do, and then there's the resources, there's going to be a new little link in there that says online learning. So as of Thursday morning, that's going to pop up in there. But of course, to access these, even for those who um, we mentioned that it would be free for, you still have to register um, in order to gain access, like a username and password. So on this landing page, you've arrived at our website, Parakore Online Learning Portal, down here in this text box, uh, you can see where you go to do that. So if you're one of the free um, ropu that we mentioned, uh, click here to register, and then you'll have access to the wānanga. And as well, if you're a commercial entity or from the private sector, um, where you'll be making a koha to access these, that's your link for them there. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Don't think you can get lost with that. And just down below, here are the three wānanga. So this is where you will find them. Now, these courses, they, they go kind of in order. They, they build in your understanding as you go through them. So as Jackie mentioned before, Te Oro Kohanga is about reminding us that we are part of the natural world, that we descend from the natural world, that we are placed within it. And it just reaffirms that we are the tena and that we have a responsibility to ensure um, that, that we look after our tuakana and all the beautiful natural world around us. So the Te Kohanga reminds us of our place in the scheme of things. From there, Ngāra wa Māori goes the next step. And it talks about how even our everyday things have a whakapapa and the things that we use in our everyday lives from steel cans and plastic bottles they too have a whakapapa and they're connected to the natural world and they're um, to the atua and um, to all the systems that sustain us so this adds value to the things we use that we may not have thought had such a value but it reminds us that they are placed within that order of things as well and then punaha hokomea the system of stuff this looks at a bigger picture again and it looks at our relationship with our stuff not just how we get rid of it but from the very beginning of the story from how we take the material the resources we use to make these materials and where we're taking them from and which part of the natural world they've come from but also how we produce them and how we move them around how we consume them and then also how we get rid of them so each of these are a step and as so we encourage you to start at the beginning and work your way through as it will build on your understanding um, as you do so um right let's go in and have a look at 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 um one of these courses so here's Ngaroa Māori and there's a few different components to each of them um now you can start here by simply hitting start course but down below as well we have the outline of what the course looks like um again these go on order you 
can access any of these sections, but you're kind of starting at the end. If you do that, it's best to start at the beginning to um, get the full picture. Um, our Wananga have a wonderful mix of video content. Um, so you can watch and listen with um, closed captioning and subtitles. So it's accessible to everybody. They also have a good dose of um, interactive activities so you can process your learning. So what you've just watched, uh, there are some tasks to do where you respond or you're matching up things or you're dropping answers, sliding some answers into boxes. And uh, there's some text to read um, with some good descriptions and explanations about things. Uh, and I'll tell you a bit more about this in a moment, but there's also some games to play, some competitive games to play to test yourself and to apply your learning. Now, I just wanted to show you a little bit. I won't play the videos now, obviously, because we, we want to encourage you to register and come into these wānanga and experience them for yourselves. Um, but let's do, no, I'm going to go back up here because I'm just going to show you one of our games, one of these interactive activities, what we're meaning. And this is, of course, going to be exciting for all the zero waste crew and earth crew in the audience because you should recognize some of these visuals. Um, this is just one of the activities. So we've learned all about our natural resources. We've learned what are the materials that they make. So here's the first one. Without any prior learning, you should already know this. Find three things made from trees. So in the chat, give me an answer. Uh, show me what you think. I'm going to click on them as you tell me. No, I actually can't see the chat because I'm busy sharing my screen. Let's see if I can get this up here at the same time. Oh, no, you're going to watch. You're going to see that. So hopefully you've chosen that one, a book. Hopefully you've chosen this one, the newspaper. And then hopefully you've chosen the box, the cardboard box. Let's see if you're correct. And when you want to check your answers, ah, oh, hey, Dika Tahoe, all right, you've got the right answer. So there's a few different versions of interactive activities like that that you can do. Um, so that's when it's really fun. If you're working with your whanau, if you're working with your kids, or if you're in a kura and you want to play some interactive games, these are some really good ones to reinforce your learning. Now, if anybody knows about Kahoot, I don't know if you know about Kahoot. This is an interactive online gaming, educational gaming platform used quite a lot in schools. It's also used uh, in organizations. Basically, what it does is it's like a competitive game where if you have done some learning with some others, you then play against each other. And it's timed and points are awarded for the most correct answer and the quickest to answer. So if you want to have fun with this and you want to take all this learning, um, hop on the Kahoot and play these games and make it into a, a, a sport. Um, if you have no idea what Kahoot is, we have all the instructions here so that you can figure out how to get on. You're playing on your devices. It's a game that you play on your device. So for Two of our wānanga, we have put cahoots at the end of them. So uh, Ngarawa Māori and the system of stuff both have a cahoot at the end. Um, I think that's just about all from me. Um, we're really excited to share these with you. We, we're looking forward to you trying them out and getting your feedback from them. Um, as Tony mentioned before, they're not necessarily stand alone they can be used after you've had a wananga with the kayarahi they can be used uh, in many different ways to review and repeat and return to the learning so that you can keep this mataranga in your kete so that's the virtual tour look forward to you trying them out hop in tomorrow come back to this page register online and um, have a go so komutit korero um nga mihi um, thank you for uh, listening and ka hoati tarako kia koe e ngā kau. Uh, kia ora po, thank you very much. Uh, we're doing well on time and this is part of our Q&A session. So if you have any pātai, please put, um, you can use the reaction butter, um, butter, button <laughs> on, your, um, on your Zoom taskbar. Otherwise, please feel free to add any part in the comments. Um, I've got one that I would like to share from Shannon. 
uh, Hussein. Um, so is it set up to work for a majority of year levels, um, for example, ECE or secondary school? So um, Paul, maybe that's directed to you. Oh, Could you answer? Yep. Um, they're designed quite broadly, uh, so they're applicable to a wide range of audience. So they could apply to adults, but they could also be really good for tamariki. But to kind of break that down a bit, there are some components that would be more for an adult audience. Some of the text that's talking about decolonization or tatariti or things like that, uh, maybe a year three, four class, it may not be that great for them but the other learning were the things like the um you know what are our things made from the video content absolutely um aligned for all ages in school and the drag and drop exercises and matching things up um they're they're based on exercises that were used in schools in the zero waste education program um so far as language levels um if you're working alongside with your tamariki that maybe be the best thing um, for some of the words. Um, older classes, yes, absolutely. I'm just thinking of the younger, like primary ages and so on, because a lot of text and words in there, but it's certainly able to be used across all ages, if that answers the question. Kapai, thank you. Um, got another one. Is it free to schools who register? Yes. Um, uh, Pato from Lisa, is there a typical length of time to complete for each wānanga? Maybe to you, Paul, again. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking of a time frame. I would say typically you have a video or a few, vid few videos and a few responses to them, and then there's a reflection at the end and up to you whether you do the Kahoot or not. So you can drop into the course and go out of it again and come back into it again. So you're not stuck in it and having to complete it all in one hit. So you could watch the video, you could come back the next day and do a matching exercise. Um, but to answer the question, I would say you could probably get through it, through them in half an hour, something like that, depending on how quickly you process information and how many times you wanna watch our videos. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, please add in any other parts that you have. Um, oh, here's one from Kiri. Can I share the link on my Marae Facebook page for Fano who might be interested in the course? That's open to any of, any of you. Maybe Jackie, maybe Jackie can answer that. <laughs> Oh, this is all very new to us. So, Karimia, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no problem with sharing the link to the uh, website page and then each person goes on and registers. Is that right? Karimia? Or anyone? Yeah, I would say definitely. Definitely, it's the, the link will be public, so share away, but Karimia might be able to add to that. Okay. That better, sorry. <laughs> I didn't think I would have to say anything today. Um, once it's live tomorrow, you'll be able to go onto the website and then from there, just share it like you would any other website. Um, and then anyone in your phone or you can register um, or from your organization and everybody will have the same access. Cool, we've got another part I from to me, uh, oh, sorry. So I'm not understanding, but um, I think that he's asking of asking if 
before staff has to register into their own account? Is that, is that what would happen when, when Arupu, like let's say a school um, wants to do this um, to do this online learning, will they have to um, have their own login? Or can they share the one? So yeah, we are, we are asking everyone to sign up as an individual within your organization. So your kura, your school, whichever you're part of signing up as an individual. Aye. Um. Just a question to you, Paul. Um, how can these uh, online wānanga be utilised as a resource in the classroom? Could you just paint a picture on how that might look like? Yeah, well, um, some of the classes I've been in, um, well, many of the classes I've been in, kids have their own devices. So you could have it up on the main screen where you watch the video together and then the kids on their own devices if they're logged in they could then do the exercises and the activities finding three things made from this what does black iron sand make put these things in order um, that sort of thing or you could do it together if you're all sitting together and have it projected up on your main screen you could do it that way definitely the cahoots would be the hit for the kids in the classroom because they'll be on their devices and they'll be competing against each other trying to get the right answers so the information contained within the wananga is then reflected in the activities that you have um, that follow so it's all based on as jackie mentioned in the whakapapa korero that this came out of the zero waste education program which typically which is a program that is delivered in primary schools. So all this content was based on that program. Um, so it's um, aimed at those levels. So it's very appropriate within the classroom. But as I mentioned before, just some of them, maybe there's a couple of places in there, there might be a big text um, script and that might be a little bit more adult, but the actual activities themselves um, and the testing, the, the asking and answering questions are all quite straightforward. You're not having to do anything too complex. Um, so just to be clear, would each student have to register? That's kind of like the question we had just before. Yeah. Um, that would be only Sorry, if they editing. were, that would only be if they were each on their own, not to play the Kahoot, but if they were each on their own individual devices, I am assuming they would have to each log in to have access to it but if the teacher was doing it the kaiko was doing it together with the classroom um it would just be the kaiko that would have to have that that registration and then they could put it up in front of everybody else okay cool thank you paul um a pass over to you jackie um what's the difference between signing up as a ropu of parakore versus undertaking these online courses Uh, I was just going to say too, just like how these um, th these online self-led wānanga, uh, they don't um, take the place of our normal oranga tayo program. It's the same with uh, the zero waste education program in schools. This is these are very short, um, <clears throat> focused on um, whakapapa and te ao Māori. So it, this wouldn't um, <clears throat> replace the value that is found in um, in having a kanohi ki te kanohi uh, educator um, with uh, zero waste education, with parakori or with any other um, sustainability uh, education programs. And now I've forgotten the question. Um, so I think it's kind of like what Tony and Paul have said that uh, when we um, sign up ROPU, which is sign up members to our, our program, we often have uh, a face-to-face kaiarahi uh, working with that member. Sometimes people aren't there. So this is great for reinforcement uh, learning as well as for those that, that um, weren't present when the, when the kaiarahi visited. As a group for someone that's not a ropu, not a member, um, it, it's a great, uh, we, we think it's good learning um, to increase our understandings about whakapapa, 
um, to, to the to the tile to the natural world and um, to increase our understandings about that um, the linear extractive exploitative um, uh, economy that that we're all within pretty much thank you Jackie um we've got another part I is there a certificate or other recognition for completing the three wanana? Um, Lisa's thinking of a school application and how kids can show the engagement with the wānanga if they sign on as an as a individual. So maybe that's for you, Paul. Right, I love that question. Um, there isn't at the moment, but I think that's a really good idea. Um, we'll stick it in our kit there to think about, but it'd be nice to get, I know what it's like with kids, even just to get something that says, I did it, <laughs> is kind of enough. Um, so we'll put that in our design list of things to think about, because that could be a nice thing to pop up at the end, but at the moment, no, there isn't. Great question. Cool, yeah, we'll, we'll save that for later and hopefully we can create something um, out of that. Uh, any last part I please put them in the chat. Um, I've just got one for Tony. Um, for those that pay, is this a one off payment or is it a recurring fee? Yes, so just a one off payment that gives you open access whenever you want to or need to go back. Yep, just that one off. And last question to you, Tony. Um, outside of this online learning, how can we sign up as a ropu for Kanohi Kite Kanohi Kaiarehi Wananga? Yeah, Kapai. So I see some people have already put their contact details on the chat. So if you want to do that right now, um, you can definitely do that. Otherwise, you can go to our website, parakore.maori.nz, and um, easily you'll be easily able to find a link to be able to um, have someone get in touch and follow up with you. Nga mahi. Kia ora, Tony. Um, if there are no other parts I left, I would just like to open that up to Tony, Jackie and um, Paul, if they have anything they'd like to end with. <coughs> Otherwise, I will close us off. Bye-bye. Um, cool. Well, we did great for time. Um, I'd just like to send a big mahi to all of you that stayed and who are watching or who will be watching the recording um, later on. Thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Um, you will receive a follow-up email tomorrow with a link to the online wānanga and a recording of the session. Um, so yeah, that's us. Uh, ki kona e au, whakahoki ai e te Māori o enei kōrero, ki te mea ngaro, hei raurangi tīkina ki a noa e tātou. Uh, kia tau, tau te ia o te Māori o tēnei taki ki runga ki a koutou, i roto i o koutou nga tini marae kāinga. Uh, taku taki e, ka heke, haumi e, hui e, tai ki e. Māori ora, kia koutou katoa. Thank you very much for coming. And I can see.